So let's do a spot check. We have deployed these three VMs. They have their appropriate network interface cards and disks and CPUs. We enabled virtualization. So next, let's do the install of ESXi on ESXi A and B and C. So to do that from the parent environment right here with ESXi 6, we'll use the vSphere client once again, and we'll open up remote consoles to those three VMs that we just deployed. So I'll go ahead and launch remote consoles to each of those. And let me go ahead and bring them into view. So there's ESXi A, and here's ESXi B, and here is ESXi C. So because we brought up ESXi A first, it should be the first one ready for us to continue with the install. So here in the window for ESXi A, I'm gonna press enter and F11. And we want to do an install to the 50 gigabyte drive. So I'll select that. It's highlighted in yellow. We'll press enter. We'll use the US default keyboard layout, press enter. I'll specify a password I wanna use for the root user on this local ESXi host. And then I'll confirm that password and then press enter to continue. It's warning me that the CPU isn't supported. Now, the reason for that is that the parent CPU on ESXA6, we're still leveraging that same CPU here in this virtual machine. So we're gonna go ahead and accept that risk in this lab environment by pressing enter to continue. It's asking us, are you sure? We'll press enter again, and then we'll press F11 to go ahead and start the install. And then I'm gonna repeat that on ESXA B and C. So here on ESXA B, we'll do the same thing. We'll press enter. F11, we'll select the disk we want to install the ESXi software to, which is the 50 gig disk, we'll press enter. We'll use the default keyboard for US, press enter, specify the root password and confirm that password, press enter and then enter and enter and F11. And then we'll repeat that process on ESXi3. So we'll go to ESXi3, press enter to continue, F11 to continue, select the 50 gig drive to install to, Select the US default keyboard, that's one you want to use. We'll specify the password that we want to use on ESXIC for the root user. We'll confirm that password, press enter. We'll accept the warning with an enter. We'll enter again to force installation and F11 to begin the installation. So then if we hop back over to ESXIA, it's now prompting us to go ahead and remove the installation media and then to go ahead and reboot. Now the way that vSphere is set up at the moment if we simply pressed enter, we don't need to manually go back and remove that media. It would automatically boot with it not connected because it just finished the install. However, in the interest of just making sure that that media is no longer logically there, let's go back to the vSphere client. We'll go to ESXIA, we'll right click. From the menu, we'll select edit settings for the VM called ESXIA and we'll scroll down. And then from here, we could go ahead and say we don't want to connect that drive. And if we're done with that ISO altogether, I'm just gonna put it back here to client device. And that way we don't have any baggage of logical connectivity over to an ISO file because effectively we don't really need that ISO anymore because we've already installed on ESXIA, we've installed the operating system, the hypervisor ESXi to its local disk already. So this is effectively removing the optical media from ESXIA, so we'll click on okay. Then we'll go back to the remote console for ESXIA. Now that we've removed the media, we'll press enter and it's going to go ahead and reboot. So we'll repeat that process for ESXIB and ESXIC. So I just wanna confirm before I remove the media that ESXIB is ready, it is. And let's also take a look at ESXIC and it's ready as well. So let me remove the media from those two VMs as well. So we'll right click on ESXIB, we'll click on edit settings and I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and simply say client device, which removes the ISO, click on okay. And same thing for ESXIC, right click, edit settings, and down to the CD slash DVD drive and say client device, which effectively removes the ISO image and we'll click on okay. And then we'll go back to the remote consoles for ESXIB B and C and press enter to trigger the reboot. So there's B and we'll press enter and that is on its way. And here is ESXIC and we'll press enter and it is on its way. And if we go back to ESXIA, now that it's installed and it's done its reboot, it is almost ready. So our next logical step then would be to specify the IP addresses that we want them to use. So it got an IP address via DHCP, which by the way is a great sign. It means that this nested ESXi host was able to, through networking, to connect to my 192.168.1 network and communicate with a DHCP server there and get an IP address dynamically. Now, because we wanna use a static address, what we're gonna do is press F2, I'll log in. And once we've logged in, we'll go down to configure management network, press enter. And for network adapters, we're using the first logical adapter, which is VMNIC0, which is logically behind the scenes connected to our first 
support group configured as a trunk. So we'll leave that as is. I'll hit escape. We'll go down to IPv4 configuration. And here we'll arrow down to set static IPv4 address. Hit the space bar to select it. Hit the down arrow key. And we want this first one to be based on our plan. We want it to be 31. So we'll use the IP address of dot 31 with a 24-bit mask. And the default gateway is still my little router on my home network, which is 192.168.1.1. And we'll press enter. And then for IPv6, I'm not going to be using it, so I'll hit the space bar to select Disable IPv6. We'll hit Enter to continue. Go down to DNS. Now for DNS, I'm going to go ahead and hard code DNS. And I'm going to tell it to go ahead and use 8.8.8.8 with a fallback to 1.1.1.1. And the reason the values are showing up as they were is because those were the DNS information it learned via DHCP. And for the local host name here, I'm going to go ahead and call this esxi a and then press enter. And for the domain, we really don't need an additional search domain. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that off. And then we'll review. So we'll hit the up arrow key and verify the details. And if all looks good, we'll hit escape. And because I chose to disable IPv6, it's going to require a reboot. So I'll hit Y for yes. And it's on its way to reboot land. And we'll repeat that process for ES6IB and C. So here at the remote console for ES6IB, we'll hit F2. We'll authenticate with our password for root. And we'll go through those same steps. So we'll go down to Configure Management Network. And we'll go down to IPv4. And we'll say I want to use a static IP address for IPv4. And for this one, it's going to be 192.168.1.32. And we'll press Enter. And then for IPv6, I'm going to choose to disable that. So I'll select that we want to disable IPv6. Press Enter. Go down to DNS Config. And specify the DNS servers we want to use. And I'm going to use 8888 and 1111. And for this one, we'll call it ESXi dash B and press enter and then we'll hit escape and then Y to continue. It's going to reboot and we'll do the similar process over here at ESXA3. We'll hit F2. We'll log in as root. And now that we're logged in, we'll go down to configure management network and specify for IPv4 that we want to set a static address. And for this one, we want to use dot 33. So I'll put that in, press enter. IPv6, I'm going to disable that, press enter. And for DNS, we'll specify the DNS service to use. And I'm going to use a Google DNS server at 8888 and then an alternate with Cloudflare at 1111, and then we'll go down and we'll specify the host name is esxi-c, and press enter, and that looks good. We'll hit escape, and then a Y to reboot, and it is rebooting. Also, for grins, it'd be fun just to confirm that from my management computer, I can reach all of those. So let's do a ping from my management computer to 192.168.1.31, which is esxi-a, that looks good, and then we'll do a ping to .32, and that looks good. And then we'll do a ping to 33, which is ES6IC. And that looks good. So our basic networking is in place. And we've confirmed connectivity from an IP perspective from our management computer right here to each of our three nested VMs. So let me open up browsers to each of those. I'd like to create, while we're here, I'd like to create two data stores on each of them that they can go ahead and use locally. And because we don't yet have deployed a nested vCenter that we can use in conjunction with these ESXi hosts, we're going to use the host client on each of the ESXi hosts to do that. All right, and here we go. So we're going to start off at dot .31. It's using its own certificate that we can't validate. That's okay for a new server. So we'll click on advanced and proceed. And then we'll log on as root. So we'll go ahead and log on as root. We'll put the password in and click login. It's asking us if we want to join the customer experience improvement program. And in my lab environment, I'm going to say no to that. Click on OK. So while we're here, let's go ahead and create our two data stores. So we're here in the ESXi host client. We'll click on storage. We'll click on new data store right here and click on next. And let's call this ESXi A DS1 for data store one. We'll use the disk that is 110 gigs and we'll click on next. And we'll use all the space, click on next. And then we'll click on yes. And then we'll repeat that for the second logical disk. So we'll click on new data store and next. And we'll give it the name ESXIA data store two. And we'll choose the available disk with 120 gig right there and click on next and next and finish and yes. And boom, we now have those two data stores. And we'll repeat that process except with the name change for each of the respective hosts on ESXIB and ESXIC. So here is the IP address dot 32. That's ESXIB. We'll click on advanced. We'll click on proceed. We'll log on as root, supply the password, click log in. We'll say no thanks for the VMware customer experience improvement program. Click on OK. And then go to storage. Click on new data store. And next, we'll plug in a name. This will be ESXIB data store one. We'll choose the 110 gig drive. Click on next. Click on next. Click on finish. And yes. 
And then we'll repeat that again for the second data store, which is the second drive. We'll click on new data store and next we'll give it a name. This will be ESXIB and data store two. We'll use the available disk that's left. That's the 120 gig and click on next and next and finish. And then yes. All right. And then we'll repeat that for ESXIC. So we'll go over to ESXIC at dot 33. We'll log on as root specify the password we set up on ESXIC, click on login, say no to the experience program, and then we'll go to storage and create a couple data stores, clicking on new data store. And next I'll copy paste in, and except this time I'll change it to ESXIC, data store one, choose the 110 gigabyte drive here and click on next and then next and finish and yes, and repeat that for the second data store, new data store. And this is gonna be ESXIC, and data store two, we'll use the remaining disk there, click on next and next and finish and yes, and we are done. So back here at the nested parent vCenter environment, let me go actually go back and let me change the theme. So I'm gonna click right here on switch theme and that way, whenever we see the dark theme, we can just realize, oh, that's the vSphere.physical single sign-on environment. Because what we're about to do in the next video is we are going to deploy a completely separate vCenter for the benefit of our nested lab environment. And that way, everything in our nested lab environment using ESXi A, B, and C will have not only their own logical hosts that we can use, but also they'll have their own unique instance of vCenter. And another benefit is that we can also do snapshots and restores, which gives us a wonderful opportunity to test things, configure things differently, and then revert back when needed. However, it's been scientifically proven that if we want these three nested ESXi hosts to have their own vCenter, we need to deploy vCenter again in this nested environment. So join me in the next video, and that's exactly what you and I will do together. <laughs>